What is good you guys welcome back to the here bro welcome back to a brand new video in today's video we're going to be giving five takeaways from miami heat preseason that i personally saw i'm going to be sharing these with you guys and kind of expanding on them as we get closer and closer to the regular season there will be a preview video coming out for the milwaukee bucks came uh in a couple of days because we do play the bucks on thursday super super excited for that man i, I cannot wait to watch how we open up the season um that's going to be an amazing game to watch for sure um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about the preseason. We're gonna, I'm going to be giving my five takeaways that I saw from preseason. And uh, you guys can tell me if you guys agree with them, disagree with them. And give me some more takeaways in the comment section below that I, I did not mention. Because I'm sure there's a lot more than the five that I'm mentioning right now. So um, like, subscribe, and definitely use that comment section as you guys always do. Let's get right into it, man. So the first takeaway that we saw from preseason is that Kyle Lowry is the difference. Now... Let me just, you know, before I even expand on this, let me just tell you what I saw from Kyle Lowry in preseason. The biggest thing that I saw from Kyle Lowry and the biggest thing that even Eric Spolster said about Kyle Lowry is the fact that his pace is at a different level. You know, it's something that we haven't had in a while. You know, I don't think we've had this pace since the LeBron James era, the Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, like the big three era. I don't think we've had this pace since then. And no disrespect to Goran or no disrespect to Kendrick Nunn. But Kyle Lowry's pace is at a different level. He pushes the pace, the tempo. It's it's all all like super 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 sped up compared to what it was last year. Last year we were second last in pace, almost dead last. Only the Knicks were behind us in pace, which is understandable. They they play for Thibodeau, but I think you know, um, especially in the regular season, it's very important to play faster. In the playoffs, the game can get slowed down a little bit, but in the regular season, to rack up some wins. You want to play at a faster pace because you can wear out your opponents like that. Um, and I think that Kyle Lowry is going to be a big, big um, addition in that department for sure. Uh, number two, what he brings is the fact that he's an amazing playmaker. You know, I'm pretty sure he racked up 10 assists in his first preseason game and he did not look back. He, you know, he just kind of just he, he just kept dishing and dropping dimes. And he was just, you know, the amount of times he was facilitating for people like it was insane. And um, I think so many people are going to benefit from him, you know, with, with his playmaking ability. Jimmy's going to benefit because he's going to score the ball a lot, you know, uh, easier. He doesn't have to look for other people as much because he has Kyle Lowry on his team who could do that job. Um, number two, Bam. I think Bam is going to take a huge leap because of Kyle Lowry. And I'll get to that because he's one of my other takeaways. Number three, shooters like Duncan, Tyler, Max Struess, like, and I'm not just labeling Tyler as a shooter, but people who are knockdown shooters on this team, they'll also benefit because they're going to get open looks. So Kyle Lowry has just added so much. His defense is also, he's not lost a step on his on, on the defensive end. It's also really, really good. Um, he was careless a little bit in the Boston Celtics game with turnovers, but you know, that'll come with time. It'll get, he'll, he'll have to get used to the, you know, the system and, you know, gel with the teammates and find up and uh, find and pick up chemistry. You know, it was only second game playing with Jimmy um, in, in the uniform. And he only played the first half with Jimmy against the Rockets. So uh, it's going to take some time for him to adjust. But from what I saw, I thought I was I was super impressed by Kyle Lowry for sure. My second takeaway is that Tally Hero might be the Heat's leading scorer. Now, um, Tally Hero had a phenomenal preseason pretty sure averaged about 22 23 points per game um and had four games where he scored over 24 um over 26 actually either over 24 or over 26 one of the two and he was absolutely amazing in preseason like he, his you know he, it was just like he was playing at, at on, on a different court like compared to everyone else like he was just on a different level compared to his defenders and um, it is preseason, but he just looks like a different player. Uh, obviously, the 10 pounds of muscle helps uh, because he, he got a lot more. He drew a lot more fouls um, in that manner. Uh, he got a, he got a couple of and ones in that manner. He was able to, you know, shrug off defenders and, you know, make sure that the contact did not really bother him that much. And, you know, shooting stroke has improved. Um, he's, he's been a lot more efficient. And he just had himself an amazing preseason. And the thing about Tyler that I think he has a really, really good opportunity to um, lead the lead the Heat in scoring. And the thing about that is that he just has the keys to the second unit. Like it's not really anyone who's going to take away shots from him 
off the bench. He's going to be that guy that we rely on. I'm going to get to the bench because that's another one of my takes. Uh, another one of my uh, takeaways from the preseason is, is about the bench. But before we get into that, like I got to talk about how Tyler Hero, he has a great opportunity at his hands because he just has to do one thing and that's score the ball. He doesn't have to be a facilitator. doesn't have to be, you know, uh, um, a guy who's going to be a... Um, a guy who's going to initiate offense and stuff. He's, he's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to ask. He, he's going to be asked to score. I won't even be surprised if he's closing games like he was in the playoffs a couple years ago because he's just that valuable, I think, to our offense. And I think that he's just going to be an, such an important player. Um, I will say about Tyler, this is completely unrelated to the season. If you guys uh, do fantasy basketball on ESPN, I would highly suggest pick up Tyler Hero. He's going to be there. He's about, I'm pretty sure he's the 136th best player. He's a lot higher than that compared to some people who are above him. So I would highly suggest, you know, if you want to take him with your second to last pick or last pick, make sure you take him because he's a guy that he's going to be a steal. Like he shouldn't be that low. Um, so that's all I have to say about fantasy because I just did a draft yesterday and it was crazy. Like I got Tyler in the last round and no, nobody took him. Him and Kevin Porter Jr. are absolute steals. So they're right back to back. I think Kevin Porter Jr. is 135 and he's 136. So I would highly suggest picking up those two as back end guys because I don't think people will see them because they're so low. But man, they could be they could be game changers. Uh, but yeah, coming back to, you know, his play on the court. I just think that he's going to have an amazing season, man. I think he's going to, you know, be uh, he's going to be great. He's going to be amazing. He just has to do his just play. Just play those strengths, which is score the ball and just go crazy off the bench. And um, he, he's, he's going to be amazing. He's going to be really, really good. The third takeaway that I do want to talk about is the fact that I think Bam Adebayo is probably going to average 20 and 10 this season. I don't think this is a, a crazy takeaway. I don't think this is anything that's, you know, out of the ordinary. He was very close to averaging that. I'm pretty sure he averaged 19 and 9 last year or 18 and 9 last year. I wouldn't be surprised if he even averaged 23 and 10, 24 and 10. Ideally, like I would love it if he averaged 25 and 10, but 20 and 10 seems realistic to me. I think that he's going to have an amazing season. He looks a lot bigger than he was last year, for sure. Like, I think I, I really think that he looks bigger. Um, and and yeah, man, he just he just looks really, really good. Like um, his his aggressiveness, I'm pretty sure it was in the Charlotte game. He was just trying to shoot everything. He was trying to go at people in the post. Like, I love that. You know, I don't care if he misses shots. Just just keep going at people, because the thing about Bam, I keep saying this, the thing about Bam that make him, makes him so unique and the reason why there's only a specific type of defender that can guard him, you know, the Grant Williams is of this world. I, I, I give Grant Williams a ton of credit. I'm not, one of my friends is a Celtics fan. I even tell him that Grant Williams, I, I've, I've not seen anyone do a better job on Bam than Grant Williams. And the reason that Grant Williams is able to defend Bam is the fact that he's quick enough to do so. He's an undersized center, uh, Bam out of bio, but he's very, very quick. So his defenders, in order to you know defend him, have to be quick as well. And traditional centers are not quick. You know, if, he, if we're going up against Brook Lopez, I would expect Bam to win that matchup because Brook Lopez is slow footed. Now, obviously, Brook Lopez has length, which can help him block shots. But I was disappointed by Bam in the playoff series because he wasn't using his quickness to his advantage. Um, and he was, you know, being given a lot of space and he wasn't taking shots. The thing about Bam is that, you know, if, if a center is too big, he can just blow by them because, you know, he, he's, he's faster than... 90% of centers in the NBA and if a center is too small he can back them down and I think you know Grant Williams the thing about him is that he's number he's he's very very quick you know as, as a defender for his size and number two he's pretty strong as well so Bam couldn't really back him down as easily as he could have you know if you actually put on if you actually put like a smaller guy yeah they're quicker but Bam would have the advantage there so shout out to Grant Williams. I, I, I thought he did an amazing job, as good as you could do. Bam slip, put up 17 and 7, but he he's just, you're not going to, you know, keep a guy like that quiet unless, you know, it was Brooke Lopez in the playoffs. But I still think that Bam should have won that matchup for sure. But I think that Bam is going to dominate almost every center that he faces this year because I just think that he he just has too many advantages. You know, if, if, if they're bigger, he can blow by you. If they're smaller, he can post you up. He definitely has improved his mid-range jump shot this year. I want to see him take more threes. I don't even th think he took a single three in preseason. Um, maybe that'll come, though. You know, Spoh said he, do he doesn't know why people are obsessed with it. It's just the fact that, you know, we know that Bam is capable. That's why we want to see him take threes. But maybe he will. We'll see. 
At number four, as my fourth takeaway from preseason, I do have to say the bench is still thin. Um, now, as, as much as I talked about how amazing Tyler Hero was and how great of a season he'll have this year, um, I still think that there's a big hole in that second unit. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I really don't know. You know, I can't pinpoint a single thing, but I just think that apart from Tyler, there was a game against the Hornets where Tyler Hero, um, I think that was the game where he was not really shooting the ball well. And that kind of just opened my eyes. Like when he was not shooting the ball well, no one else on the second unit was able to really do anything. You know, Gabe Vincent had a couple of shots here and there. Max Struess had a couple of shots here and there. Markeith Morris has not really found his footing yet. He looks a little bit uh, shaky, um, especially from the three-point range. I thought he looks a lot better from the two-point range instead of the three-point range. But he's supposed to be a three-point shooter. Dwayne Dedman is not this, you know, big scorer either. So the bench is still a little bit thin. And this worries me a little bit because if Tyler Hero is not really, you know, up to speed, because there are going to be some games where Tyler Hero is not playing as well as we would have wanted, wanted him to. You know, he's, he can't put up 20 points in every game. Like, he's not going to do that. There's, there's going to be a couple of games when he's having an off night. And we need one of these other guys to step up then. You know, I would love to see Caleb Martin given uh, give some minutes. I, I don't think he's this amazing scorer either, but he, he's still a very good spark plug to have off the bench for sure. Um, and this really, really demands the, the need for Victor Oladipo to come back um, at least 70 to 80 percent of what he was before he got injured, because he, him and Tyler off the bench gives me a lot more confidence than, than than Tyler and Gabe. And this is no disrespect to Gabe. I think he'll have a good season, but he's just not the same scoring presence that we need him to be. So, you know, hopefully Oladipo comes back and hopefully he can provide uh, uh, some good minutes because um the bench is still a little bit thin without him for sure the last takeaway i do have to talk about is the fact that uh the defense is the defense is crazy the defense is really really good and you know we saw that from game one itself you know people diving on the floor for loose balls and hustling and stuff like this team has dogs man the, the defenses are really really good i'm super super excited um i think we'll be a top five defense in the nba you know this year um if not, we might be number one. We'll see. But I think the defense will be amazing. Um, Duncan Robinson's defense has gotten better too, bro. Don't sleep on his defense. His defense has definitely gotten better. I, I have not been sleeping on it. Uh, people, you know, obviously he's the, probably the worst defender in the starting lineup. But I think he's I think he's become an average defender. He was very, very bad a couple years ago. Last year, I thought he improved. His IQ has always been really good. It's just the fact that he's gotten bullied a little bit. He's, he's just a little bit smaller, but he's put on some muscle. And I think his defense has become average. I don't think it's, you know, anything special, but he's not a slouch anymore on the defensive end. Um, and yeah, man, I, I just think that, you know, the defense is going to be the reason why we go so far. I don't know how far we'll go. Hopefully it's all the way. Um, I, I do think we have a good chance, but the defense will be a big reason, you know, why we do something in the playoffs this year. Um, and I think that's where we're going to end the video. Make sure y'all leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Um, let me know your let me know your takeaways as well. I'll see you guys later as always. Peace.